Hi, Jack Cush, ULAR 2019. Have an interesting presentation today on anakinra in Kawasaki's disease. The trial was entitled the Kawakinra study, a phase two multicenter trial to assess the efficacy and safety of anakinra in refractory Kawasaki's patients who've been treated with IVIG. As you know, Kawasaki's can be a devastating illness, mainly affecting children, mucocutaneous lesions, cardiac lesions, coronary artery lesions that can be deadly. Um, but, you know, therapy has been revolutionized. Uh, everybody gets aspirin, um, almost everybody gets IVIG, and that's effective in a high percentage of patients, um, maybe as much as 80% of patients. But there are some patients who still have problems, and for this, these, this group, there's not a lot of options. That's why the study is being undertaken. This is an open-label 45-day study uh, was, that was given, where the, the drug was given to a handful of patients to see if it would affect the systemic outcomes and also the coronary artery outcomes. So it had to be uh, children um, over eight months of age and less than 18 years of age, uh, greater than five kilograms in weight, um, and they had to have been seen with more than three months of symptoms. And they had to have failed IVIG and have the diagnosis of Kawasaki's disease. Um, the primary outcome here was uh, reduction in fever, but then they looked at other measures of disease activity, including coronary artery abnormalities by echocardiogram. So as I said, this was a 45-day trial. Uh, patients were dosed with anakinra, a once-a-day anakinra, given subcutaneously at a starting dose of two milligrams per kilogram. It then was escalated to as much as six milligrams per kilogram uh, based on weight and response to therapy, uh, et cetera. So overall, in this 45-day trial, where 16 patients um, fulfilled inclusion criteria and, um, and were then treated, um, they had how many? Four that received three milligrams, five that received four milligrams, and six that received six milligrams per kilogram uh, in this trial. Um, the vast majority of patients responded briskly. Within 48 hours, more than 80% of patients responded with a reduction in their temperature and loss of fever. The other outcomes were things like patient uh, global, physician global, all doing great, CRP um, dropping, um, uh, physician global, as I said, um, but the main one that everyone concern, is concerned about is what happens to the coronary arteries. And there the story was actually quite good. There were a number of patients who had dramatic drop quickly and by day 14, a few patients actually had some very, very high levels that took a long time to come down. There were a few patients who stopped therapy and their coronary artery lesions got worse as measured by something called a Z-score. Uh, and, uh, and again, that's the outcome measure that you're looking for in patients with Kawasaki's disease. So we know this disorder does have a significant effect on, this drug has a significant effect on systemic manifestations, and it looks like it's somewhat protective, if not very protective, in, against the development of coronary artery lesions. So it was safe, it was effective in this 45-day short study. The question is, would this be enough for it to supplant the standard of care, which is aspirin IVIG, I don't think so. You need a larger trial, you need a control trial to know that that's the case. Clearly it's gonna be easier and cheaper maybe than IVIG, um, and there's gonna be a limited amount of therapy that's gonna be necessary. But again, the question is, um, how should these people be, be treated from the outset? Standard of care for right now, but it's good to know that anakinra is a drug that can be used safely and with effect in patients with Kawasaki's disease. Tune in for more videos from ULAR 2019.